NASA's Double Asteroid Redirect Test Mission, or DART, is on its way to test whether or not we can defend ourselves from an incoming asteroid. It was launched in the early morning hours of November 24th aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. DART's destination is the asteroid Didymos, and in particular, its satellite Dimorphos. Now, since this is NASA's first planetary defense mission, DART won't explore the asteroid so much as crash into it. And the idea is pretty straightforward. If an asteroid were on a collision course with Earth, the best thing to do would be to change its direction so that it misses us. There's a number of ways we could do this. One idea would be to set off a nuclear weapon, either right next to the asteroid or just below its surface, to let the blast push the asteroid out of the way. Another would be to fly a spacecraft just in front of the asteroid and use their mutual gravity to alter the asteroid's course. This is called the gravity tractor. Yet another idea would be to fly a giant Fresnel lens to concentrate sunlight on one part of the asteroid and let the vaporizing material act as a thruster. Those are just some of the redirection ideas that have been proposed, but the most technologically feasible way of deflecting an asteroid would be to simply crash a spacecraft into it. And this idea is called kinetic impact deflection. Now, this is not the first time we've deliberately crashed a spacecraft into something. In 2005, NASA's Deep Impact spacecraft fired an impactor into Comet Temple 1 in order to dig up fresh ice and dust from underneath the comet's surface. The mission taught us a lot about comets in general, but it wasn't designed to test just how much we could deflect an object from its original orbit. And that's because Temple 1 takes 5.6 years to orbit the Sun once, so it would have taken a lot of precision monitoring over a long period of time to assess just how much the comet's path was deflected. So DART will instead be impacting Dimorphos, which is a satellite of the larger asteroid Didymos. Dimorphos orbits Didymos about once every 12 hours. Since the impact will change Dimorphos' orbital period, we should be able to measure that change relatively quickly. Moreover, Dimorphos is gravitationally bound to Didymos, so it's not going to fly off and hit Earth or anything. Now, to be clear, there is no threat of an asteroid hitting Earth anytime soon. At least, none that we're currently aware of. But as of today, we know of nearly 28,000 near-Earth objects, or NEOs. Most of these are asteroids that either approach or cross Earth's orbit, so they're definitely worth paying some attention to. Most of these objects are so small they would burn up in our atmosphere. That might make for a spectacular meteor, but they're otherwise harmless. mostly harmless. Of those 28,000 near-Earth asteroids, one-third of them are about 140 meters or larger. Now, that's considered long enough to do some real damage, especially if they were to hit a populated area. These larger NEOs are classified as Potentially Hazardous Asteroids, or PHAs. It's estimated that Earth is struck by one of these PHA asteroids every few thousand years or so. So while there's no threat from an impact now or in the foreseeable future, it's not really a matter of if one of those asteroids would ever hit us, but when. So now's as good a time as any to test our ability to redirect one of these asteroids. Now you might think it should be pretty easy for DART to hit Dimorphos and alter its orbit. Yet when DART reaches Dimorphos, it'll be more than 11 million kilometers from Earth and will hit the asteroid at over 15,000 miles per hour. That's too far and too fast to be controlled from Earth, so DART will have to complete its mission autonomously, with a little help from a CubeSat. So today we're going to talk about the DART mission in some detail and see just how this mission is going to work. But first, I would like to thank Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. We are at the forefront of a modern-day gold rush, and asteroids could hold the key for private companies to launch into deep space. Asteroids A New Horizon is a two-part documentary that dives into the science and engineering behind the companies leading that race. It's one of more than 3,000 documentaries available on Magellan TV, which features titles on history, nature, science, and technology. 
new documentaries are added every week. And now my viewers can take advantage of a special holiday offer, a buy one, get one free annual membership, just by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Didymos is a near-Earth asteroid on an eccentric orbit between Earth and Mars. It's inclined by about 3 degrees of the ecliptic. In 2003, Didymos closed to within 7.2 million kilometers. During the encounter, astronomers used the Arecibo Radio Observatory to get a rough idea of Didymos's size and shape. They also discovered its satellite Dimorphos. The radar data indicated that the larger Didymos is roughly 780 meters across and likely widened around its equator, much like the asteroids Bennu and Ryugu. Dimorphos is estimated at 160 meters across and is likely elongated. It's expected that these two asteroids are tidally locked to each other, with one side facing the other at all times. But we don't know that for sure, nor do we know the exact size or shape of either asteroid. And just as importantly, we don't know the exact composition of Dimorphos either. It could be a single solid chunk of rock or more likely a rubble pile of smaller rocks held together by gravity. In early October of 2022, Didymos will approach to within 11 million kilometers of Earth. That's why DART launched on November 24th in 2021, so that it has time to catch up with the asteroid at its closest approach. That will allow telescopes on Earth to see if there are any visible brightenings due to the impact. So here's the plan. Dimorphos orbits Didymos at a distance of 1.2 kilometers, completing an orbit once every 11 hours and 55 minutes. Ideally, DART's impact will slow Dimorphos' orbit by just a few centimeters per second. Now, that might not seem like much, but it should be just enough for Dimorphos to fall slightly closer to Didymos and shorten its orbital period by a few minutes. Since Didymos is an eclipsing binary asteroid, Telescopes on the ground will be able to measure this change in orbit by comparing the timing of eclipses before and after impact. In principle, all of this seems pretty straightforward. But then you have to remember that all of this will be happening 11 million kilometers from Earth at speeds of several kilometers a second. There's no way to navigate this impact from the ground. That means DART has to find Dimorphos and hit it autonomously. To do that, DART carries the Didymos Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for Optical Navigation, or DRACO, as its sole imaging payload. It feeds high-resolution imagery into the Small Body Maneuvering Autonomous Real-Time Navigation, or SmartNav, system. The SmartNav will use the DRACO imagery to identify and distinguish Dimorphos from Didymos, and then automatically maneuver the spacecraft during its last four hours before impact. But Draco isn't going to be the only imaging system used on this mission. About 10 days before impact, DART will launch the Light Italian CubeSat for Imaging Asteroids, or LeechaCube. LeechaCube was built by the Italian Space Agency and will monitor DART's impact and examine the crater afterward. To do that, LeechaCube is equipped with two camera systems, the LeechaCube Unit Key Explorer, or LUC, and the LeechaCube Explorer Imaging for Asteroid, or LEA. Yeah, those backronyms. Anyway, LeechaCube will use its onboard thrusters to adjust its trajectory such that it passes by Dimorphos about three minutes after DART's impact. And that will allow it to view the ejecta cloud and possibly glimpse the impact crater. Not only would that imagery just be insanely awesome, but it would reveal details of how much material was kicked out, how fast it was ejected, and in what direction. And that information can further help characterize the momentum exchanged between DART and the asteroid, and thus tell us how effective the kinetic impact was at deflecting Dimorphos. And as an added bonus, Leech Cube will obtain imagery of the backside hemispheres of both asteroids, and that's something that DART will never see. Now, all of this will take place in October of 2022. DART's got some time to kill between now and then, so it'll be demonstrating several other new technologies along the way. For example, its Rollout Solar Arrays, or ROSA, are a new design that are lighter and more compact than traditional arrays. The ROSA design was first tested on the International Space Station in 2017, and DART is the first planetary spacecraft to fly the new arrays. By the way, as an aside, 
those arrays did successfully deploy. Lucy, I'm looking at you. One of the ROSA arrays will also carry a new transformational solar array design demonstration. TSA uses a combination of high-efficiency solar cells and reflective concentrators to generate three times more power output than current array technology. So if this works out, future arrays can be made smaller and lighter for inner solar system missions, or they could support missions in the outer solar system without having to rely on nuclear power. DART is also demonstrating NASA's Evolutionary Xenon Thruster Commercial, or NEXT-C. This is an advanced ion propulsion system that accelerates ions formed in xenon gas through an electrically charged grid. Now, the thrust generated by this engine is very low, but it can be sustained for a much longer time than a chemical rocket. And this makes ion engines ideal for long-duration deep space missions. Next C offers improved efficiency and thrust over the current ion designs. Since it's a technology demonstrator, DART will primarily use its hydrazine thrusters for propulsion, but Next C could find its way onto future missions if everything goes well. Now, the DART mission is operated by NASA's Office of Planetary Defense, which, by the way, sounds like a really cool place to work. But they're not on their own as far as saving the world is concerned. They're also being joined by the European Space Agency, who are collaborating with their HERA mission, which will launch in 2024 and arrive at Didymos in 2026. And by that time, the outgassing and dust from the DART impact will have long settled. So that will allow HERA to assess the damage and build up a high-resolution visual, laser, and radio map of Dimorphos. Now, it may not sound as sexy as the DART impact mission, but HERA will effectively turn DART's experiment into the first well-understood planetary defense technique. And that's certainly going to be a much better technique than sending a bunch of oil drillers to blow up an asteroid with a nuke. Now, if you haven't seen the movie Armageddon, do yourself a favor and don't. It's the dumbest movie ever made. Thanks so much to my patrons for their continued support, and I'd like to welcome Dahlia's first day of school and Jim Weedman as my newest supporters. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this incredible universe of ours, well, please make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay curious, my friend.